guys? Welcome for another episode of Kanoto RN. And uh, it's been a while since I made a nursing video. And today I'm gonna discuss how to do hemodialysis and particularly using a portable reverse osmosis machine. So stay tuned and roll on the logo. Okay, we are back. And to start, hemodialysis has a lot of ways um, to be done. So you can do it in the clinic where you use a centralized reverse osmosis. It's uh, actually a big room locked and only the person who can go there. And there's a lot of ways to check the water before we can start the treatment in the clinic. So there's actually a, a line that, that goes to the, to the treatment area and the, the pipes are on the walls and then you can just connect the hemodialysis machine there. And then another one is that if your patient is not stable enough to be sent to the treatment room, then you can bring the whole dialysis uh, in the room, like in ICU or intermediate. And, and that's where uh, I'm gonna focus on uh, hemodialysis by using a portable reverse osmosis you bring that machine there in including the hemodialysis machine and you do your treatment there in the patient's Before room. we continue if you're interested to my channel please subscribe and then ring the bell button for more interesting videos okay so uh, we will start our day by uh, checking the machines of course after logging in right <laughs> and in your in your uh, um, treatment area and then you uh, you check the machine and see if there's uh, a sign there uh, if it needs to be checked for bleach because sometimes uh, the previous shift bleach the machine and then you have to check the bleach uh, for residuals and then whatever is in there you know uh we always like hang something on the on the uh pole ivy pole of the hemodialysis machine and see what you needed to do and then but the usual day we usually start with rinsing the machine for 15 minutes so it's gonna take a while to rinse right so that's the time you go to your computer or whatever you're using to check the patients and then see if what the order is so see the labs if the potassium is high or low what's the bath and everything there should be checked so that you can prepare what is needed to be brought in the patient's room um, what's the bath uh, like the bark uh, the bicarb the uh, potassium and then the other stuff that you needed to do the access site uh, is, is it a graft? Is it a fistula? Um, and then how how long does it take to do your dialysis? So you'll think about it, and and then you bring slowly all that is needed to 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 be uh, brought to the patient's room. And then if you see some order that's kind of like not applicable to that date, because sometimes the doctor placed the orders uh, ahead, like yesterday, and then there's a new lab result, so you can call the doctor and maybe revise the order so sometimes if the potassium is high and then the bath is also high so you need to call the doctor because you need to adjust it so that it can go to uh, the normal level so uh, we use the rule of seven so for example if the patient has the latest result of potassium 4.5 then if the order is kind of like also four you know like it's kind of like oh it's gonna make it like 8.5 so that's not good uh, so you call the doctor and maybe revise the order maybe 2.5 to 3 so 4.5 plus 2.5 or 3 but the final board is gonna be from the doctor it's just an idea for you to use so that you can call the doctor and uh, change the order So uh, after uh, getting the new order, then you uh, you call the nurse that is assigned to that patient, the primary nurse, and uh, t 
tell her that you're gonna do the dialysis today there's an order and uh, you give her report and she give you report too so for example you can ask the nurse like uh, you uh, ask the nurse if the patient has already eaten if he has a diet because it's not really advised to uh, uh, have dialysis and then the patient hasn't eaten yet if he has a diet of course because uh, during the dialysis if they're hungry they want to eat and you cannot allow them because uh, usually if the patient eats during dialysis the blood pressure goes down so you don't want that uh, if the patient is having pain issues ask the nurse when is the last time he had a pain medication and then what's the pain score you know see how he's going with the with the analgesics and uh, or the pain medication if he has nausea might as well give it before you do the dialysis um, and then uh, if the patient's kind of like uh, having some psychological issues something like that or if they're disoriented or confused sometimes they're agitated so might as well get uh, the PRN medication and calm them down uh, usually you know you have to talk to the doctor and see if they're okay with it uh, and there's a protocol so you have to follow it uh, and then whatever is needed to be done before you start the dialysis you have to make sure that it's done and then some labs can be um, done too but then if, if it's not taken you can uh, also uh, do it uh, for for the labs during the dialysis you can get some medication I mean some uh, labs too before you start the dialysis thing is that uh, you have your machine the hemodialysis machine and then you also have your uh, portable reverse osmosis you bring it to the patient's room I make it sure that the nurse is aware that I'm there all the time as a courtesy and uh, as previously reported if the patient is isolation so you have to wear the gown and everything you know before you go and enter the room and then you introduce yourself to the patient and uh, tell the patient what's the plan for with uh, regards to uh, his uh, treatment, uh, hemodialysis. So if the patient is okay with you bringing the machine, you put the machine in the room and you start with the reverse osmosis uh, machine, uh, put it in the water pipeline and start it by uh, rinsing it. Uh, for 15 minutes and uh, before you came in right you already rinsed it but the protocol is really to rinse it before every treatment so that's what I'm uh, doing all the time I rinse the machine for 15 minutes and then I always start with uh, identifying the patient so I like to make sure that that patient is the the patient that I have for that treatment so you have to uh, make sure that uh, he has the correct pain correct uh, date of birth and uh, and I go to the hospital system all the time and scan the patient so I got not just only two but three to make sure that he's really the patient uh, for this uh, particular treatment and then of course you have to make sure that the patient has uh, the consent if there's a blood transfusion he has to have uh, a blood transfusion form too so you have to make sure that everything is there uh, before you do anything so you confirm the patient see if you're allowed to do the treatment and then that's the time I start my assessment your pre-treatment assessment you can get your vital signs uh, and then see whatever you need to do with particular to the assessment and then you have a basis of comparison if something happens you know so uh, you start with that, with that. so um, you're done with the rinsing of the reverse osmosis the portable one and then that's the time you check your chlorine see if it's below 0 0.02 or whatever if it's above then you have to uh, if you have time I, I usually like change it but this sample is just for the normal one so if you're okay with the chlorine and that's the time you connect the hemodialysis machine and start priming the machine so uh, while you're priming the machine when you're done with it 
uh, you can also check the other uh, pressures of which is also required because you have a log and you have to uh, make sure that you uh, do it so one uh, of it is you have to check the pressure so there's a gauge there you can list whatever is in there and then see if it go goes beyond the required pressure you have uh, to check also the ultraviolet light if it's on you also have to uh, check the rejection rate of the reverse osmosis so there's actually a computation there and it has to be uh, above 80 but in my company that i work for we usually uh, go around like 98 99 percent which is one of the best and if you have time then that's the time you prepare the needles the other things that you need to uh, prepare like the hemoclip uh, what else uh, gauze alcohol and whatever you know you have to uh, prepare it be beside the bedside and then when you're done with all the water things that uh, that is needed then it's time to prepare for cannulation so cannulation time and let's just say that the patient is uh, ready because you already uh, informed that are you ready sir we're gonna start with the treatment okay so and let's put the needles in and then you put the arteria the venous and then if it's all working well uh, like for example you uh, put the needles in right and then there's a backflow of the blood you let the blood go back from the needle to the tubing and fill it so that there's no air in there and then you uh, uh, make sure that it's uh, flowing well right and then you clamp it and then uh, and then check the other side too so if everything is good you actually have a, a, a saline that you can use a 10 ml saline and see if it's flowing well if you want to check it and then you go back to the machine and then you dump arterial uh, which is 50 ml and then the venous you can dump it 250 and then when you're ready then you connect the um, lines to the patient and make sure that uh, you know it's completely secure so uh, this is really important so you have the connection uh, secured uh, from the machine and going to the patient right so before you unclamp anything we have to make sure that the supply of the IV is clamped and with a scissor clamp so clamp that IV first before you open the four clamps of the needle connection and the hemodialysis connection so and then you try to uh, start the hemodialysis treatment by starting the blood flow rate of 150 and then the blood will start to flow and before uh, we start you know I just forgot that if you're ready to to dump the the saline from the hemodialysis machine the machine should be ready yeah, the goal of the treatment for example we're gonna remove 1.5 liters then you add 500 because uh, because 500 is from the 250 prime and then the 250 reads back if you're ending the treatment then that's the reads back so 1500 plus 500 so you program the goal to 2000 ml so pra pra practically it's uh, the, the whole order of the doctor you put it in the machine and then start with a blood flow rate of 150 and then the blood will start to roll make sure that you check the patients see their faces don't let them cover their faces and then you check the machine too if it displays a good blood pressure or not you know so you actually have a starting blood pressure or the starting vital signs that you have to put into in your records and then uh, it's gonna decide it's gonna be your basis of how to continue it 
So if the blood pressure is good, then you continue it. If not, then you have to make some adjustments. So the patient is starting uh, the treatment already. Every uh, two hours, you check the chlorine. So after the blood flow rate of 150, when you're starting your uh, dialysis, there's actually a blood flow rate included in the doctor's order. So if it says 350, then after the next vital signs uh, taken, then it should be bumped up to that order. So you have to check the arterial pressure, which should not go beyond 250. And then you have to check the venous pressure, which should not be above 300. As uh, previously ordered, uh, 1,500 is a goal, right? And then plus the 500, so it's 2,000. So the goal of that UF should reach 2,000. So you have to put every 30 minutes the current UF. Like for example, it's currently around 120. And then the next time, every 30 minutes, it's around 100 something you know or 200 already something like that so it just depends okay so let's just say that the treatment is almost done then you need to get a vital signs before you end it before before you return the blood so I usually get uh, a final vital signs and then final pressures and everything that you do every 30 minutes and then prepare the other stuff too at the bedside for the return of the blood so if you're done with the treatment the machine will alarm what you're gonna do is press the stop button for the blood flow rate and then remember that the IV uh, connection is uh, clamped right you open it and then clamp the upper part or the venous part of the T line so that you can squeeze the IV from the IV line going to the arterial side and push the uh, blood back to the patient. That's for the red line. And then when you're done with it, transfer the clamp to the lower part of the T, lower the blood flow rate, of the machine to 150 and then it will push back the blood from the T in the venous line going back to the patient. So you already returned the arterial side manually and then the venous side through the hemodialysis machine. Done. Stop the blood flow rate and then clamp the four lines of the patient the two lines which is the needle side and then the two lines which is the machine side next thing to do you have to check the vitals of the patient see if the blood pressure is okay and sometimes if the blood pressure is low you do have a protocol to give a bolus of 100 ml and one one of the ml more before you disconnect the patient and then after 15 minutes you have to check another vital signs the final vital signs or the post vital signs of the treatment and uh, and then make sure that everything is okay before you try to leave the patient and then of course you have, do have to inform the nurse that the treatment is already done and then that's it so that's kind of like the summary of the hemodialysis treatment uh the other stuff is that you just disconnect everything and put the machine back to your uh, uh treatment room in the hospital or your hemodialysis area bring that uh, machine there and then rinse it again if uh if uh if the patient doesn't have a um, hepatitis panel updated so for example, if the hemodialysis uh, panel, hepatitis B antibody is positive, that, that means the patient is uh, immune. If not, then he is uh, susceptible. 
if it's unknown then you have to beat the machine so there's another story about that with regards to how to maintain and uh, how to properly use the hemodialysis machine uh, to make sure that everything is safe for the patient and so there you go thank you very much for watching my short summarized hemodialysis treatment and hopefully I can make more thank you very much for watching and hopefully you subscribe uh, my life is kind of like really interesting so please follow me thank you very much and bye bye